live. What is up, YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, everyone? What is going on, everybody? Hey. Um, <laughs> in this video, I'm just going to set up a typical Python project. Uh, more or less, all of my Python projects usually follow the same structure. So if you're in Midnight Sun, or if you're someone that I talk to, or someone that I'm working on, on a Python project with, um, this is usually the normal structure that I go with. All right. So this is a project. This is some project that me and Vlad have right now. Vlad's on this call. Say hi to all of our YouTube fans. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Hello, YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is... <laughs> uh, Vlad has joined us today in this session. Um, so in here, I'm just going to go and delete this entire thing and then set it up on a... like. I'm just going to start from a new uh, setup. So for now, let me just commit whatever I currently have. Ooh, making a new shell screen. Okay, here's my shell screen. Uh huh. As you can tell, my computer is being super slow. Okay, EOPI solutions, get status, get add everything, get commit. I'm just going to put a really bad commit message. Actually, I can have a good commit message. Solve the problem for P1. Then get push. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now we have everything over here. Let's go back, rm-rf eopi solutions. So I'm basically nuking this repository. And then I'm gonna actually do conda remove uh, name, I think there's name, eopi solutions. Let's see, does this work? Conda remove, what's the, no package name, so, uh, sorry, just let me Google this in my tutorial video <laughs> on the remove environment. This will take a second. Um, managing environments. Hmm. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Conda. It's all about creating. I want to remove. Remove. Not remove. Remove. Removing an environment. Ooh, there we go. Conda remove that dash dash name. Oh, okay. Conda remove name EOPI solutions dash dash all. Let's see if this works. Yes. Preparing transaction, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. Verify that was removed just to condor info ends. All right, nice. So we don't have that anymore. All right, uh -huh. we're just going to start from a fresh start. I'm just going to follow the um, guidelines that I put in the repository myself. So... Yes, I was reading those. Yeah, EOPI solutions. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Let me close PyCharm. It's probably freaking out that the workspace that I had opened just got nuked. All right. Um, so here's our repository, um, and yeah, so we pretty much have like, I'm just going to follow these to make sure that they're uh -huh. correct guidelines. Um, so we pretty much clone this, and then we cd into it, and then we create uh, the conda environment. So this works, yay. And then looks like everything is happening. They're executing transaction. Yay. All right. So now we activated the environment. So you can see that the environment has been activated. The EOP uh, sure. shows up here. So we just install all the requirements. I didn't really add a lot of packages here, Vlad. I just have um, PyTest and yes, yes, I looked. PyCode style and PyLint, and that's it. Um, so after this is done, uh, we're going to use PyCharm here. Um, 
we can use whatever you like actually. But PyCharm has been super yeah. good for me. Um, so I PyCharm actually has this command line uh, uh, command line instruction. It's charm. So if I do charm dot, it'll just open this folder yeah. in PyCharm, which is pretty cool. Okay, you know that. Let's wait for PyCharm to come up. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. So we pretty much have to add this environment to our path, which Python pp copy. This is a little trick in Mac OS. Whatever you pipe to pp copy comes to your uh, clipboard. So if I paste it, it'll be mm -hmm. that, whatever the output of that command was. Yes. I remember every time you copy the SSH thing. Yeet. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we just wait for PyCharm to come up. It's going to take a little while because I guess my computer is doing a lot of stuff. I don't know what it's doing, actually. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's my work laptop. It's been quite some time. Yeah, it's my work laptop, which is why it's slow. All right, ah. we close the tip of the day. It is updating indices. I think it's Zoom that's causing this to slow down a lot because all of my screens are probably getting broadcasted. But it's okay. We'll just go wait for this uh -huh. a little bit. Ba, ba, ba. Ooh, I'm liking the live, live session, brother. This is beautiful. What? I'm liking the live learning session. This is very nice. Yeah, exactly. Fully interactive. Yeah, it's super interactive. Um, all right, so here's our project, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so I've divided it into source and tests. Yeah. Um, the, we, the way we have it is that we have this protocol. So for every uh -huh. single problem, I have this, like in the protocol uh, kind of module, you have, for every single problem, you make a different file, and for every in every file, you only have one class, and the name of the class is the name of the file, but camel case. So it's problem 4P1, yeah. for example. So if we're yeah. solving for problem 4 part 1, um, uh -huh. And then here, I just um, we just basically define whatever we think is the best uh, signature for the solution for that problem. So this file will just have one method that will be the solution of that problem. So in yeah. this case, problem 4P1 is called get parity. Um, and then uh, here, I just raise a EOPI. EOPI is standing for our project. I just classify yes. some errors here. So I have a EOPI error, and then I have a not implemented error. So all of the uh -huh. errors that we could run into, we can just like classify them here so that we can decide yeah. to what we want to do with them. Um, and then here I just raise an EOPI not implemented error. So if you don't implement this in your own class, it'll like throw an error so that you would uh -huh. know that this is not implemented. And then we have Urshan and then we have Lodge. Um, and then over here, I basically have the same file name, but I just uh, post fix it with Urshan. Um, yeah. And then it's the same kind of naming convention. And then I have this get parity method defined. So I overwrite the super class, which is the problem 4P1. I yeah. overwrite this class, and then I just re-implement this get parity. And I just, like, as I was going through the book, I came up with this, which is a brute force, and then the least bit. And then this one is something that I came up with right now. And I didn't, like, I just tried it in the test pass, but I don't think the book has done it that way. We can go through it later. Uh -huh. It's actually pretty cool. Um, so this is the problem, and then um, for in the tests, I have manual tests and unit tests. Um, this is how I usually structure all of my projects in Python. Unit tests are the ones that can actually run automated in an automated manner. So if I yeah. were to set up like continuous integration, these would be the tests that would run, and they're basically just unit tests. And this is supposed to pretty much mirror whatever your whole project is. Well, in this case, because we're just having like we're just having a whole bunch of problems here, we can just keep this flat and put all the tests for problems in the same place, yeah. because yeah. we are using the same test files for both of our codes. So both me, yeah. my code, and your code will use the same test file. And then uh -huh. this is how a test looks like. Um, I'm just parameterizing. So I this is just like uh, this decorator runs this. It, it makes this function run this many times with input and output and the num and parity uh -huh. are basically that and the test body is super generic it's basically assert that instantiate solution this basically instantiates the class so if you want to run your own tests you should just inc import from vlad.problem blah 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 import yeah, yeah. vlad solution and then just instantiate it here so uh -huh. this instantiates it and then calls get parity on it 
and then it's, it's, uh, oh, it's yes, I see. the same. Yeah, yeah that's the only thing that I was like not fully familiar with, but I'm sure once I try it out a couple times, I'll, I'll follow the same structure and I'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, honestly, we don't have to like stick it, stick to it like super strict, but overall kind of like summary of all of this is that yes. we define a protocol here we make sure that we kind of mm -hmm. uh, abide by that protocol within your own classes you can do whatever you like you can even have other files and like include yeah. stuff from other files if you would really like um, because it doesn't really matter in the end it, it just gets mm -hmm. included um, and then yeah pretty much and this is our unit test so to set up the project uh, if you take a look at here here it's going from protocol.problem 4.1 uh, it's not going from source, even though the top level yes. directory of this is source. So how yeah. do we make sure that this, and the reason I did that is because I just don't like having like a top level source everywhere because this is uh -huh. my code. So I don't really, like your code should never have like from test import something because your source code should be source code. So whatever I have here is assumed to be source code. Um, so the way you do it is basically, so. So how do you get PyCharm to not complain? Um, yeah. Because when I'm doing this. And the reason, like the solution is Python path. There's some variable, just like your shell path variable. Um, it's called Python path. Um, yeah. And that basically oh, yeah, yeah. what's the top level uh, modules are that, you, that Python yeah. uses when it's like importing something. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much go to your, uh, yeah, it's pretty much project. You go to project structure project structure and then source and then you do this and this marks this top level as a source so if I do import Arshin and any of the files here within this yeah. project it'll work yeah. right alternatively it would be from source.arshin.protocol because Py PyCharm by default takes this top level and adds it to source mm -hmm. right yeah. um, so this is pretty much setting up your source um, and then oh sorry I think I needed to do something else too we go back to projects, interpreter, and then we go here, add, we okay. just want to add a interpreter here. Um, conda environment, because we've already made it. We do existing yeah. environment, and then over here, we just paste whatever we had be from before. Oh, interpreter, let's see. Okay. Yep, so I just pasted it, and it starts finding it. Boom, it found it, right? Yeah. I hit okay. Miniconda and UAPI solutions Python. Hit OK here. It'll take a while before this starts loading all of this stuff from that environment. Usually it's not that slow if you try this at home or like it with your own computer. It's going to be like much faster. Um, right now this is not a really good computer that I'm doing this on. Um, and then another thing that we need to set here is the tester of our um, project. And you just go to tools. Python integrated tools, um, and then change this unit from unit tests to PyTest, because that's the library that we're using. Um, and then pretty much it takes a while before PyCharm kind of like indexes and like figures out this project, but then everything will work. Um, so project interpreter, I pretty much documented all of it here too, but we will have both the video and, and this file, so you don't see it's basically what we just did for like setting yeah. tests um, and then good shortcuts uh, control shift R, R uh, it runs the current test and then control R runs whatever was the last run uh -huh. um, running tests from command line we can do that here I'll show it uh, in a bit let me see if this is completely loaded yes it is okay so to after you've solved the problem um, so like let's say I did this problem right and then I solved it yeah um, and I was like, okay, cool, now I want to use this. Basically come here to my unit test. I actually write the test first, like this is what I did here. I already yeah, yeah. knew what my inputs and outputs were, so I didn't really have uh -huh. to make any design decisions, especially with algorithm questions. It's super easy, you already know what the design of the class is. It just has like one method, and that one method gets called. So yeah. here I'm just going to delete this. I'm just going to delete this to show you this one cool trick. Um, so here I, I know what the class name that I want to import is, right? So I can just do yeah. return, but instead of like providing the full path, I just hold down control and option and then space, and then this will pull up this menu, and then I can just do problem for p option. Oh, this is. Do control option on Mac? 
uh, it's control option on Mac, yeah. So oh, it'll basically pop it up. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and when I do that, it pretty much like imports it for me. So I don't have yeah. to do anything. Um, and then this pretty much instantiates it. So for all of these, so this is basically, oh, and, and a really other cool thing that I found out is that in Python, numbers can be as, be as big oh, as yes. you like. Yeah, I actually have a, a playground test here that basically finds out what's the biggest number before Python complains. Um, so in this, this last case, is, uh -huh. this is too big a number. So if I uncomment this, the last test will fail uh -huh. because it'll, um, have an or overflow error. But yeah, I found that amazing too when I was reading, because in the book it mentions it, right? Oh, I didn't know. I just like. Uh, oh, yeah, it mentions Googled it in it. the book. And, and then I was like, what? What? They're like, they're infinite precision. I was like, what does this even mean? And then I Google, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. But they use a lot of space, like a lot of memory to actually cause that to work. Like I was reading this nice Stack Overflow thing and it was a lot of. Storage used to make that really function. interesting. That was interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was amazed. I didn't know this was a thing either. So mm -hmm. this is cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, this is one of those problems where like this was like our one fifty. Uh, you see, one of our one you see one fifty problems where we had to like do addition of numbers that were bigger than usual. Oh yes. Um. Okay. So this is it. Pretty much, if you come here, like wherever my cursor is, I'm using idea vim. But wherever yeah. my cursor is, I just use control shift and R, and then it'll run that one specific test for me. And then if I go on top of the class, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll run the entire thing. Alternatively, you can this. just <laughs> right click, um, and then you, you know it has like run by test in this folder. Yeah, yes, everywhere. yes. And I remember this from the That's pretty workplace. much it. I think our project is set up. Um, the tests are set up, uh, everything is pretty much set up and working. Hmm? I think, like, I, I don't think I missed anything, did I? Oh, running it from the command line. So, yeah, so the I... equivalent of um, basically what we did previously, which was um, go to these, uh, the project structure and like be able to like add source to the source path. Um, what yeah. we do here is pretty much you have to like go to the project and activate and then you would have to just add source to your Python path variable. So this is what I'm doing. Right? So if Python oh, yes. path gets this source string added yeah, to yeah. it, then you can basically run PyTest. Um, PyTest test, unit tests, and we'll start, oh, whoops, it's not working. No, why not? No test ran. PyTest tests. Oh, because it's called tests, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I just need to change this. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Let me start. Yeah, recording. that makes sense because then it can actually find the classes that it's importing, right? Yes, exactly. Of course. Exactly. PyTest pretty much uses the same environment that your Python is using. Mm -hmm. It's written in Python itself, so whatever you run it in, um, whatever Python uh, file that takes as input, it starts importing all of the stuff that those files are importing as if you just had like a main Python file in the root of your project structure and like ran that. Uh -huh. um, okay, let's do stop recording. Wait, what? Is this recording or what? I swear to God, if this art is. Did not we take recording. an L? Did we? Did I just take an L? 